Karsten, thank you very much uh, for taking the time for this interview. Thank you very much, Julia, for, for having me. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. RiceTech is one of Liechtenstein Group's portfolio companies and uh, a world-leading agricultural technology business um, with a production area of uh, 1.5 million hectares and producing about 24,000 tons of rice seed per year. And you have been uh, RiceTech's new global CEO now since August. Uh, what were you most looking forward to? Yeah, you, uh, thanks. You, you summarized it really well, know what RiceTech is all about. Uh, and look, and I've been really looking forward to experience that and in particular to meet the team, you know, to meet the team, to meet the employees, to meet the customers. Uh, you know, I heard so many great things about RiceTech and its people and its customers before. So that was something I was really looking forward to, to experience that firsthand. And I, I had the experience by going you know, to our US field day, going to Brazil and to India within the first four to five weeks. Uh, and you know, it was a great experience. I had such a warm and passionate welcome from uh, from all the people there, uh, and it was a great start. <laughs> and uh, what expectations did you have before you started? I know I, I expected uh, Rystic to have a very strong technology platform uh, to be you know very much focused on rice, obviously to have a strong emphasis on sustainability, and to have also you know, plenty of opportunities to expand and grow. Uh, I would say like all of those expectations have been met in the first couple of weeks. Uh, I really truly believe we do have an opportunity to transform rice agriculture towards a much more sustainable agricultural practices and to do so uh, at a global scale. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you perceive rice tech as a company? How is it positioned in the market and uh, what is special about it from your point of view? Yeah, no, rice tech is one of those unique companies who you know, are still relatively small, but are real tool in agriculture, right? And you know, we're not as big as the big multinational players, but we already do have a, a you know, global presence. We have a global technology and a unique technology. Uh, and I think you know, that, that really makes us, uh, makes us special in agriculture. Um, the second thing is our people. You know, we have everybody in the company is, is so much focused on rice. There's such a strong expertise and a passion Uh, for rice and uh, the bridge is the whole value chain from farm to fork. Uh, that's another thing that makes us really unique. And then last but not least, I think it's our customers. And we've been focusing so much on uh, on our customers and providing excellent customer service uh, that the customers are really appreciating that. They really want us to be successful as well. And I've really seen so much positive customer feedback in those first couple of weeks um, than I've been able to see here at Rice Tech. That's great. Um, you mentioned um, your visits to the business units. So RiceTech is actually headquartered in uh, Texas, USA, but you have additional business units in South America and India. So how do you experience these uh, three cultures? What opportunities do they offer? Yeah, um, as I said, I was able to experience that firsthand uh, during my visits. And you now what was what was common in all of those visits was you know, the, the passion and focus on rice. And the unique expertise and know-how. That was that was great to see. That's a unique uh, asset to build on. Um, as always in agriculture, you know, agriculture has very different local agricultural practices that we need to adapt to in, in every geography that we're active. And so I think you now that provides a unique opportunity for us to combine our global expertise, our global know-how, our global technologies, learn from each other, adapt these technologies to respective local practices. And then now we let challenge often the status quo um, now and change the, you know, the technologies to suit those local needs uh, in a really focused way and do so all for a you know, much more beneficial, better and more sustainable agriculture wherever rice is grown. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the um, uh, current situation, what developments are currently emerging in the market uh, for rice tech? For example, does the Ukrainian war play a role that will become important for Aztec? Um, Yeah, but firstly, let me also say that it's really sad what's happening in Ukraine. But I feel sad and sorry about you know, the losses that people have to suffer, probably on both sides. Um, now, for, for rice specifically, um, there's not a lot of rice grown in Ukraine and Russia, but the effects that you know, the war had on uh, you know, pretty much the whole world and, and the other industries as well, are also effects that we have to deal with. You know, 
increasing commodity prices, uh, increasing volatility, high inflation, now often no supply chain constraints and localization of supply chains, trade restrictions, um, or they're all impacting rice cultivation in the areas uh, where we're active as well. And those are all challenges we have to deal with. So just as one example, very recently, India has announced export restrictions uh, on rice. Um, and of course, no, those are those are some of the challenges we, we navigate, we need to navigate through uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, on a longer term, what challenges and opportunities do you see for rice tech? Yeah, on the, on the no, mid and longer term, I do see more opportunities than challenges. And I think no, there are probably three uh, global mega trends that, uh, that pose significant opportunities as well for us. Uh, the first one is sustainability. No, we talked about this already. And I think it's particularly you know, sustainability in the context of uh, contributing to climate change, uh, reducing carbon emissions also reducing water usage you know, that is very, very relevant for agriculture and particularly relevant for rice and therefore for rice tech. Um, I think secondly, it's you not know, digitization. Uh, you know, digital has uh, made a big impact on many industries and has transformed many industries. And that has also started uh, in agriculture. So that's another opportunity we will be focusing on. And then last but not least, it's you not know, there are many multiple scientific advances also in the area of biotechnology that is of course really really relevant for our our product development and our r d and that's i would say the the third key mega trends that we're focusing on so all of those are creating probably more opportunities than challenges and they will help us you know, to create not just benefits for rice tech but also benefits for our customers and uh, and the planet mm -hmm. Um, as you mentioned, sustainability, this is one of the uh, governing principles of Liechtenstein Group. And in what areas do you think uh, rice tech should and can make rice cultivation more sustainable and also more social? Yeah, I was, I was able to experience that now in my very first weeks that sustainability uh, now probably is part of the DNA of the Liechtenstein group and, and therefore also of rice tech. But everything we do is at, at the very core at rice tech is all about sustainability. Um, now we always had, a, had an emphasis on sustainable food production, or i.e. or creating more food for an ever more populous planet. Um, but now I think over the last decade or so, the definition of sustainability has expanded and has become a bit more complex. Uh, and now that definition of sustainability now includes more environmental sustainable food production, uh, includes you know, lower carbon emissions, lower water use, uh, improve, includes improved labor conditions. And, and our technologies you know, can contribute to all of those. So with our technologies, we can not only contribute to more sustainable food production, uh, but also to more environmental sustainability. Uh, and that's what we'll be focusing on. Mm -hmm. Could you give an example? Uh, yeah, look, I, I think the best the best example I can probably give to illustrate that is in the in the area of uh, of India. Um, and you know, if you if you look at rice cultivation in India, that's typically happening in what is called a transplanted system. Well, that system rice is grown in a small seedlings in nursery and then transplanted into the field. Now that comes with three uh, major disadvantages. One is you, know, you can imagine that it takes a lot of labor. And that's backbreaking labor to transplant those seedlings into the field. Secondly, the field gets flooded with water. So it's using a lot of water um, that comes then at the expense of you know, depleting uh, groundwater levels. And thirdly, you now as part of that uh, agricultural system, a lot of methane is produced and emitted. And methane is one of the most potent greenhouse gases. And so now rice is often therefore perceived as one of the major contributors uh, to carbon emissions in agriculture. Now, with our technologies, uh, we have the opportunity to, to change that system and shift parts of the cultivation from a transplanted system in what we call a direct seeded rice system. And that is not new. That is pretty much the standard in, in the US and all of the Americas. And in a, a direct seeded rice system, you can use mechanized planting. So now you use less backbreaking labor, it doesn't need that much water. So there are water savings in the order of 30%. And because it's not always growing in water, there's a lot less methane 
emissions, uh, and there are significant uh, opportunity to reduce those greenhouse gas emissions in the order of you know, two and a half tons per acre, which is about the, you know, the emission levels of uh, you know, running a combustion engine car uh, for a whole year. So you know, significant opportunities uh, to, uh, to create a positive impact on, on all these areas. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about technology and uh, maybe a controversial topic, uh, gene editing, which is one technology RISTEC uh, is using, um, is not allowed in Europe, yet many experts sees, see it as the best way to adapt plants um, fast enough to climate change, for example, when it comes to drought, uh, when it comes to um, water consumption and disease uh, resistance. So what role does gene editing play for RISTEC? Yeah. Um, Agriculture, in particular seeds, is a very science-based industry. Uh, in order to create a good seed product, you know, companies like us need to use many different tools and technologies and science uh, to be able to you know, always deliver those good products to our customers. And gene editing you now is certainly you know, a great technology to have in the toolbox. It's not going to be the only one, but it's a, it's a key, a key element uh, in the toolbox. Now, for example, We are we're always observing naturally occurring mutations in plants that create beneficial characteristics. Tolerance for, for diseases uh, would be one. Uh, and then we're aiming to understand and identify the respective parts of the DNA that cause these effects. Right? And then we are trying to replicate and bring those effects into our products. Now, in that context, which is what we can achieve via normal breeding, gene editing enables us as a... Um, to use it as a much simpler technology and do that in a much more targeted way to bring those beneficial characteristics in our products. And, and unlike GMO, or unlike genetically modified organisms, gene editing only uses naturally occurring uh, DNA, or works with the native genes in an organism uh, and uh, changes the expression of those genes. Um, and so that is probably one of the key differences uh, of these two technologies. Mm -hmm. um, do you think uh, that the regulatory framework should be reconsidered when it comes to gene editing, GMO, and so on? Um, look, I, I hope and, and I wish that all technologies are always being assessed based on their on their risks and their merits uh, that they contribute to you know, industry and industry and and agriculture, uh, and of course being you know supported by very transparent communication education communication education of, uh, of, the, of the people to create that understanding and to create that support. Um, I think many countries in the world have gone through this process already and have come to the conclusion that no gene editing is a technology that provides relatively little risk, but has significant merits um, you know, for agriculture and for our planet. Uh, and uh, I hope that you know, Europe also goes through such an assessment and uh, hopefully ends up with the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look into the future. So what are the three most important topics for Rice Tech that you would like to work on in your new role uh, in the coming months? And uh, what successes would you like to be able to look back on? Um, yeah, three, three most important topics. Uh, I guess the first one is uh, defining our strategy. Um, You know, strategy 2035 is, a, is an initiative that we've just launched, which is you now exactly to, to look into the you know, growth opportunities that we have identified, the ones that we like to focus on and prioritize, uh, and that will set the direction for the next 10 to 15 years, uh, and that will you know, then have an impact on how Rice Tech will look like in the future. So, so that's certainly one, uh, you know, I'm very keen on, on driving this forward. Um, I think the second one is around employee engagement. And all, any strategy is only as good as the people who implement it and, you know, and as the engagement uh, of the whole organization is behind these strategies. And that starts with the leadership team, uh, but it includes every single employee. So that's the second area uh, I, I'm very passionate about and want to focus on. And then the third one is, is probably around sustainability. And all we've talked about that. And I think we as RISEC have a unique opportunity here to, to increase our profile uh, around our contribution to global food security and sustainability uh, and to you know, demonstrate how our unique technologies significantly contribute to all these benefits we talked about, contribute to lower carbon emissions, lower water use, 
less land use or for not just for the benefit of uh, of rice tech, but pretty much for the benefit of our customers and a, and a healthier planet. Mm -hmm. uh, and one last question, what um, strategic uh, priorities would you like to set um, in the long term? Yeah, I, I don't want to jump to the conclusions here as we're going with the whole organization through that uh, strategy 2035 process at the moment. But now it's, it's certainly going to be based around our, our hybrid rice technology platform. That has been a, a core and unique strength of ours. It's certainly going to be based around the passion and expertise uh, that our company has on, on rice uh, from farm to fork. Uh, and it's, it's going to focus on capturing the opportunities that those mega trends around uh, sustainability, digitization, Uh, and biotechnology uh, provide for us. Yeah. Karsten, thank you so much. Uh, uh, it was great talking to you. Um, welcome on board of Liechtenstein Group and uh, I wish you all the best uh, for your new job. Yeah, thank you very much, Julia. Look, I only can say that I feel very privileged to be part of this organization and, uh, and very proud to be, uh, be with the whole team.